Welcome to Q&A practice. Let's start out with the plaintiff attorney. Ready? Here we go. If there's other, other differences in elevation that this wouldn't show, I would like if you would explain that, what surrounds Mr. Avery's. There's a small berm that starts in this area, Mr. Avery's land. Most of the salvage yard is in what seems to be an old quarry. Mr. Avery's land and the rest of the house were up on where the normal grade would have been. So there's a small berm between his land and Rad's quarry. The further you get to the south, the higher that berm gets between the two properties. Mr. Bow from within the 40 acres itself, is there also a difference in grade? Yes, there is. Can you describe that for us, please? As I said, where the house and the buildings are, they seem to be on what was the first grade. As you go into the quarry, you have to go down hills into the quarry, and then you reach a bottom grade, where it seems is where they hit the, the rock bed, so it all slopes down as you go south and then it kind of levels out in the bottom and then when you get to the south end of it there is a large burn between that land and the next quarry what's the next exhibit that you have in front of you what number 85 okay could you just tell us what that is please this is an aerial photo from the south of the whole avery property we're going to go through these rather quickly but i'm going to show you now exhibit 85 does that show the whole of the 40 acre avery salvage property yes it does if you can just briefly tell us what are the four corners that we're talking about this is the north this would be steve avery's land to the northwest this is where the command post was set up this would be Alan D's house. This is the southeast. This is where the small retention pond is and where the car was found. And this would be the southwest. This is where the belt would leave the land. Does exhibit number 85 allow you, you to show the jury all four locations where you had people posted throughout the day? Yes, it does. And if you could just briefly point to those areas. There would be one person in this corner at the end of the road. Let me just stop you there. Would that person be with a squad? Yes, a marked squad. Yes, most of the time. Yes, oh, go ahead. There was an officer down in this area under the belt. There was an officer here in this area watching the top of the berm in this area up here. And then we had people up here at the command post. Now, other than those four corners, if you will, are there other access points? In other words, are there other ways in which a person or a car would enter this land? The only way for a car to enter the property would be through the belt down here or through the main drive up on the top. It splits. You can get down through the buildings or you can come down this edge and come down into it. There's a fence that runs along here and is a steep grade through here so you couldn't access it with a car. There's also berms that run down this side and then around the bottom and then up this side. To the west of Steve Avery's it does show a body of water. Do you see that on this exhibit? Yes I do. And can you point to that please? What is that? It's a low spot in the quarry where the water sits. Okay, this is a good good way to talk about the weather that week. Do you recall the weather the week of the 5th of March? I wasn't there the 5th of March. I was told it rained though most of the night when I got there on Sunday the 6th. It was cold and windy in the morning. We had a snow shower that came in through the morning which is one reason why we didn't start opening the cars until the afternoon the, through the rest of the day or through the rest of the week. It was just cloudy and cold. The roads from within the Avery property, when you got there on the 6th, would you describe that condition for us, please? In the salvage yard, yes, they were very muddy. They were covered in water. Some of them had as much as a foot of water on them, so we had to be very careful where we drove inside the salvage yard. For the first few days, we didn't take squads down in there. We would use four-wheel drive vehicles if we had to get in there or walk through it. I think there's only three exhibits left. Why don't you tell us what's the next exhibit you have? 86. What does that show? The aerial photo of the entire property from the north. So what would be the exact opposite of 85? Is that right? Yes. Other end? Yes. Now I'm going to show you exhibit number 86. Just the same view as 85, just from the north instead of the south. Is that right? Yes. You had said that there were some searches on areas that surrounded the Avery land, including some gravel pits. Exhibit 87 and 88, are those related to any of those searches? These are photos that would have been taken inside of one of the gravel pits. All right, do you know by looking at 87 and 88 which pit 
or is that too hard to testify to? Yeah, I wouldn't be sure. All right, are you able to identify exhibits 87 and 88 or not? No. All right, we'll save those for another witness. What was your schedule? In other words, how often were you there and were you ever relieved and did you ever go home from that location? I arrived Sunday morning about at 7.30. Mr. Sipple had been there since Saturday. I stayed through Sunday, stayed Sunday night. Mr. Sipple went home Sunday night and came back Sunday morning. I stayed until Monday afternoon or Monday evening. I think I left around 7.30 at night and then I returned the next morning again at about 7. So we were both there during the day and then we took turns being there at night. So how many hours straight would you be there? And then about how many hours would you be off? About between 30 and 36 hours we would be there and then we would be off the property about 12 hours. All right, how long did that last again for? I left Friday night and didn't return to the property. Mr. Sipple had returned Friday morning and then I think he was the last one off the land Saturday when they left the 12th yes referring to exhibit 86 which is the last exhibit and the one that's shown the buildings both the homes and the buildings who was responsible for arranging the searches of those that was arranged by Mr. Weig and Mr. Fass okay so the cars and the land itself was your part is that is that right yes yes the buildings, that is, the inside searches, was the lead person's, is that right? Yes. Did you participate in any of those inside searches or was your part limited to outside or car searches? The only part I would have had with the inside searches is if Mr. Weig or Agent Fast required one of the teams from inside one of the buildings to move somewhere else. I may advise them of that or send somebody to assist them in moving, but that was my only part. All right, finally, Mr. Bow, I'm going to direct your attention to March 1st and 2nd of 2006. Did you return to the land on those two days? Yes, I did. <coughs> and what was your part on March 1st and 2nd? On the 1st and 2nd, they had a search warrant for Mr. Avery's house and his separate garage. I was keeping track of the people entering and exiting Mr. Avery's house. Is there a term for that? I was logging them in and out. Okay, you weren't involved, however, in any active searching. No, I was not. Good morning, sir. Good morning. I have got Exhibit 85 up on the screen for no... Well, I picked this one up only because at least north is to the top, which is where we're used to looking at on maps. And you told us where the security points, points the 24-hour security points. That's my term, not yours. Yes, but you know the four corners, four corners, yes, that you described. Before I get to those for just a moment, you were logging people in and out of this whole 40-acre area from March 6th for you through the 11th or the 12th as well, weren't you? Yes, are you referring to the front? Well, that's where I'm going to go and only I, and when I say you logging, I don't mean just you only, but that was one of the tasks you were watching. I did not oversee that, but there was a person logging people in and out of the property. Okay, and where was that done? Mostly that was done where Avery Road met 147. There was a squad car parked right on Avery Road at the front. Okay, so although, although Avery Road, which runs north to 147 and 147 was roughly east-west at that point yes and Avery Road is paved it it really only goes one place right dead ends at a cul-de-sac just outside the business entrance yeah the pavement just ends right about in this area and then everything else is gravel drive from there so so when you for example would come for one of these 30 to 36 hour shifts this would get checked in or logged in up north of this photo where you turn off 147 yes to come down Avery Road yes I would the logging in would be somebody just looking at you and you writing your name on a log sheet or the person with the log sheet writing your name down yes now once you were known by the people keeping the log that's pretty quick in terms of identifying you we still had to show who we were the people weren't familiar with us at all so and it was a rotating group of people who were yes doing the logging yes it was okay and you weren't always coming in uniform as you are today I always wore my work jacket so I had my patches and my badge okay but even there yes we can see you are from the Calmet County Sheriff's Department but we want your name right right the purpose for well first of all when and when you are familiar with that sort of logging operation, yes, I am. In fact, you did it on March 1st and 2nd, yes, at the small area of Mr. Avery's house. Yes, 
Yes, I did. When you are logging people in and out, the purpose is to log everyone in and out, right? Yes, it is. I'm sorry. Yes, it is. Okay, now, and in general, if there's an ongoing search or, or law enforcement effort in general, you your point, the point, would be to keep the public out. That's one point, right? That's one point of it, yes. And in general, another point would be to know which law enforcement folks are in, right? The main purpose is to keep track of who came into the land. Now, this isn't to say that some members of the public might not be allowed in. I mean, someone who made a trade purpose or someone who needed to pick up medicine, if there was some a, a good person for a member of the public to come in, somebody at that outside logging point either can make the decision or could radio back and decide whether to let in for someone in for a, a purpose or not. Yes, they could. All right, we will stop there and that will conclude our Q&A practice.